welcome back friends welcome back to another video session from this channel so in this video session we are going to learn about post translational modifications in detail so what exactly happens during post translational modifications so after the successful synthesis of the polypeptide chain or the protein during the translation mechanism or the translation process now the specific protein it undergoes certain modifications so these modifications they are nothing but what post translational modifications now here my question is why in particular polypeptide chain or a particular protein it undergoes post translational modification so the answer to this question is very simple the newly synthesized polypeptide chain or the nascent polypeptide chain it undergoes post translational modification in order to induce in order to induce proper protein folding and as well as in order to localize a specific protein to its native destination and in addition the specific post translational modifications they are also responsible for the successful recruitment of one specialized covalent moiety to the newly synthesized polypeptide chain so in order to organize all these various aspects the post translational modifications they are carried out in case of the prokaryotic cells and as well as in case of the eukaryotic cells so here in most common in most common the post translational modifications which are carried out or which are observed in case of the prokaryotic cells or in case of the eukaryotic cells they are organized in case of endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus and as well as in case of the cytoplasm in all the various subcellular organelles the post translational modifications they are most commonly observed right so here in case of the prokaryotic cells and as well as in case of the eukaryotic cells there is an availability of various post translational modifications so all these are the various post translational modifications which are observed either in case of the prokaryotic cells or in case of the eukaryotic cells right and these include these post translational modifications include sumylation phosphorylation methylation glycosylation acetylation ubiquitination isoprenylation phenylation palmitylation carboxylation methylation meristylation adp ribosylation biotinylation s nitrosylation and the last one is hydroxylation so all these are the various post translational modifications which are observed in case of the prokaryotic cells and as well as in case of the eukaryotic cells right so right now we are going to study right now we, we are going to study about the various post translational modifications in detail right so here at first we have to understand the basic concept or the basic mechanism in order to organize the post translational modification in order to organize the post translational modification either in case of the prokaryotic cell or in case of the eukaryotic cell the specific mechanism it takes the advantage of enzymatic reactions right enzymatic reactions so by taking the advantage of enzymatic reactions which are either reversible or irreversible so these enzymatic reactions are either reversible or irreversible right so by taking the advantage of by taking the advantage of certain enzymes the covalent moieties right covalent moieties they are most commonly recruited covalent moieties they are most commonly recruited to the nascent polypeptide chain or the newly synthesized polypeptide chain right nascent polypeptide chain or newly synthesized polypeptide chain so this is the basic idea behind the organization of the post translational modification either in case of prokaryotic cell or in case of the eukaryotic cell so here at first we are going to discuss about sumylation right so what is sumylation what exactly happens during sumylation so if we consider the sumylation so sumylation sumylation stands for small ubiquitin like modifier are able to understand here sumylation it stands for small ubiquitin ubiquitin like modifier like modifier right or it is simply abbreviated as sumoylation right so what exactly happens during the sumoylation this specific sumoylation which is an post translational modification it is very similar or it is very homologous to ubiquitination what it is ubiquitination ubiquitination 
to the specific post translational modification it is quite homologous or it is quite similar to ubiquitination but still the sumoylation it gets varied from the ubiquitination in some specific aspects so here we need to understand here we need to understand what exactly happens during the sumoylation post translational modification right so here the specific sumoylation the specific sumoylation most commonly it is observed most commonly it is observed under cellular stress what it is cellular stress cellular stress and as well as tumorogenesis 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 right so in all these aspects in all these aspects like cellular stress and as well as in case of the tumorogenesis the specific sumoylation post translational modification is observed here so what exactly happens during the sumoylation so during the sumoylation the specific sumoylation the specific ubiquitin moiety the specific ubiquitin like moiety it gets successfully recruited here and as i have already told you the specific sumoylation it is not observed under normal condition the specific sumoylation most commonly it is observed under abnormal conditions like cellular stress and as well as in case of the tumorogenesis in order in order to repress the gene expression the sumoylation post translational modification is most commonly observed so here let us we consider let us we consider the structure of a nucleosome right so what is nucleosome in general when the specific dna when the specific dna when it is wrapped around the histone octamer the histone octamer it is nothing but what nucleosome right it is nothing but nucleosome the specialized structure it is nothing but nucleosome so here under normal condition the specific sumoylation it is not activated under abnormal conditions like cellular stress and tumorogenesis the specific ubiquitin like modifier the specific ubiquitin like modifier it gets successfully recruited to the histone octamer histone octamer so once once when the specific ubiquitin like modifier when it gets successfully recruited to the histone octamer protein under such condition the specific genomic sequence the specific genomic sequence which is wrapped around the histone octamer it is unable to induce or it is unable to participate in the gene expression so in this way the specific sumoylation it is capable to inhibit or it is capable to repress the gene expression so this is about sumoylation and what about phosphorylation here the specific phosphorylation the specific phosphorylation it is in specialized post translational modification which is most commonly observed in case of the proteins like casein a specialized milk protein known as casein phosphorylation phosphorylation right so the specialized post translational modification it is observed in case of the milk protein milk protein known as casein milk protein known as casein casein and as well as in case of the blood clotting protein known as prothrombin blood clotting protein known as prothrombin prothrombin right and the last one is calcium binding protein calcium binding protein which is nothing but call modulin calcium binding protein which is nothing but call modulin so in all these various aspects the phosphorylation post translational modification is observed so what exactly happens in case of the milk protein known as casein right so here in case of the milk protein known as casein in case of the milk protein known as casein there is an availability of hydroxyl containing amino acids right hydroxyl containing amino acids like serine and as well as threonine hydroxyl containing amino acids like serine and as well as threonine so let me present it here serine and as well as threonine so here the specific casein protein the specific casein protein when it interacts with atp 
when it interacts with ATP, as we all know, the specific adenosine triphosphate, it possesses three phosphate moiety, right? So, one of the phosphate moiety, one of the phosphate moiety which is in part of ATP, when it interacts, when it interacts with the specialized amino acids like serine and as well as threonine, right? The specific casein protein, it possesses hydroxyl containing amino acids like serine and threonine. So, once when the specific casein protein, when it interacts with ATP, so the specific phosphate moiety which is a part of the ATP, it interacts with serine amino acid. So, once when the phosphate moiety, when it interacts with the serine amino acid under such condition, serine is modified into phosphoserine. Serine is modified into phosphoserine. So, the specific phosphoserine, the specific phosphoserine, it acts as a hot spot. The specific phosphoserine, it acts as a hot spot for binding of the divalent cation like calcium. For the binding of divalent cation like calcium, calcium, right? Divalent cation known as calcium. So, in this way, in this way, the specific divalent cation known as calcium, it gets successfully transferred from the mother's milk to the newly born baby or to the infant, right? So, this is which is nothing but the specific phosphorylation which is observed in case of the milk protein known as casein. And what about the blood clotting protein known as prothrombin? In case of the blood clotting protein known as prothrombin, there is an available definite specialized amino acid and it is nothing but what? Gamma carboxyglutamate. So, let me write it here. In case of the prothrombin, which is a blood clotting protein, there is an availability of specialized amino acid and it is nothing but what? Gamma carboxyglutamate. So, the specific gamma carboxyglutamate, which is a part of the prothrombin, it acts as a hot spot for binding of the divalent cation known as calcium. So, here, here the recruitment of the calcium, here the recruitment of the calcium which is a divalent cation, it is responsible for inducing the blood clotting. The specific prothrombin, it is capable to induce the blood clotting only when the specific calcium which is a divalent cation, when it gets successfully recruited to the comma carboxyglutamate. So, this is about the blood clotting protein like prothrombin. So, in case of the blood clotting protein known as prothrombin, so the specific phosphorylation the specific phosphorylation post translational modification is observed. And what about the specific call modulin? The specific call modulin, the specific call modulin, it is a calcium binding protein. So, the specific call modulin, it is capable to recruit or it is capable to allow the calcium only by taking the advantage of phosphorylation. So, this is about phosphorylation, right? And the next specialized post translational modification, it is nothing but what? Methylation. So, let me erase the things here. Methylation, right? So, methylation. So, during the methylation, what exactly happens? Recruitment of methyl group takes place, right? Recruitment of methyl group takes place. Methylation. So, what exactly happens during methylation? During the methylation, recruitment of methyl group takes place. Methyl group, it gets successfully recruited to the nascent polypeptide chain. Nascent polypeptide chain. Right? So, here, let us we assume a newly synthesized polypeptide chain, right? So, this is the polypeptide chain which is synthesized during the translation mechanism. So, here there is an availability of N terminus and here there is an availability of C terminus. So, here the specific methyl group, the specific methyl group, it gets successfully recruited to the nascent polypeptide chain at the N terminus by taking the advantage of an enzyme known as what? Methyl transferase. What it is? Methyl transferase. Methyl transferase. So, methyl transferase is the enzyme 
which is responsible for the successful recruitment of the methyl group to the nascent polypeptide chain. So most commonly methylation it is responsible for inducing the stability for the newly synthesized polypeptide chain. So once when the nascent polypeptide chain which is synthesized during the translation mechanism when it undergoes methylation under such condition the newly synthesized polypeptide chain or the protein it acquires the stability. So in order to acquire the stability the newly synthesized polypeptide chain it undergoes methylation. So this is about methylation right and the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but glycosylation what it is glycosylation. Glycosylation right. So let me write it here. Glycosylation. So what exactly happens during glycosylation? So during glycosylation, during glycosylation, recruitment of carbohydrate side chain takes place. Recruitment of carbohydrate side chain takes place. Side chain takes place at the end terminus of the newly synthesized polypeptide chain at the end terminus of newly synthesized polypeptide chain end terminus of newly synthesized polypeptide chain newly synthesized polypeptide chain right so let us we assume a newly synthesized polypeptide chain so this is the newly synthesized polypeptide chain right which is synthesized during the translation mechanism. So this is the C terminus and it is nothing but the N terminus. So here most commonly the specific glycosylation it is capable to organize under two different strategies right. The specific glycosylation most commonly it is observed in case of the prokaryotic cells or in case of the eukaryotic cells under two different strategies and these two different strategies they include N-linked glycosylation and the other one is O-linked glycosylation. One is N-linked glycosylation and the other one is O-linked glycosylation, right? O-linked glycosylation. So at first we are going to study about N-linked glycosylation, then after we are going to study about O-linked glycosylation in detail, right? So here during the N-linked glycosylation, the specific carbohydrate side chain the specific carbohydrate side chain it gets successfully recruited to an specialized amino acid known as what aspergine right the specific carbohydrate side chain it gets successfully recruited to an specific amino acid known as aspergine which is most commonly present at the end terminus of the polypeptide chain so once when the specific carbohydrate side chain when it gets successfully recruited to an specific amino acid known as aspergine which is present at the end terminus of the polypeptide chain so it is nothing but what n-linked glycosylation so most commonly n-linked glycosylation it is observed in case of endoplasmic reticulum and whereas O-linked glycosylation, it is most commonly observed in case of Golgi apparatus, right? Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus. So here, what exactly happens during the O-linked glycosylation? So in case of the O-linked glycosylation, which is carried out or which is observed in case of the Golgi apparatus, recruitment of the carbohydrate side chain it takes place to certain hydroxyl containing amino acids like serine and threonine right recruitment of carbohydrate side chain it takes place to the newly synthesized polypeptide chain which is containing or which possess serine and threonine amino acids so it is nothing but what o-linked glycosylation o-linked glycosylation it is observed in case of the golgi apparatus so this is nothing but what glycosylation and the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but acetylation what it is acetylation acetylation right so let me write it here so what exactly happens during acetylation acetylation right so during acetylation as the name itself suggests during acetylation successful recruitment of the acetyl group to the newly synthesized polypeptide chain it takes place at the end terminus 
acetylation or the acetyl group it gets successfully recruited to the newly synthesized polypeptide chain at the end terminus it is nothing but what acetylation right so the specific acetylation it is most commonly responsible in order to induce the gene expression so once when a specific gene once when a specific gene when it is to undergo the gene expression once when the specific gene when it is under when it is to undergo expression most commonly the gene expression it is carried out by taking the advantage of a specialized post translational modification and it is nothing but what acetylation right acetylation so here the acetylation post translational modification most commonly observed nearly in case of all the cells right so this is about acetylation and the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but ubiquitination so let me write it here ubiquitination so what exactly happens in case of ubiquitination ubiquitination right so after the successful synthesis of the polypeptide chain after the successful synthesis of the polypeptide chain during the translation mechanism or during the translation process now the specific protein it gets successfully translocated into the endoplasmic reticulum so once when the specific protein when it gets successfully translocated into the endoplasmic reticulum the specific protein it has to undergo protein folding so for your better understanding let me present it here so let us we assume a newly synthesized polypeptide chain it was synthesized during the translation mechanism so let us we assume it as the endoplasmic reticulum right endoplasmic reticulum and these are nothing but the translocons which are acting as the channels here right which are acting as the channels here so let us we assume something like this so these are nothing but the translocon which act as the channels for the successful recruitment of the polypeptide chain into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen right so here so let us we assume it has the small subunit of the ribosome and it is the large subunit of the ribosome and it is nothing but the mrna right mrna so here the newly synthesized polypeptide chain which is synthesized during the translation mechanism it gets successfully translocated into the endoplasmic reticulum so once when the specific protein when it gets successfully translocated into the endoplasmic reticulum under such condition the specific protein it has to undergo protein folding for suppose for suppose if the specific protein if it is not folded properly when it has successfully entered into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen under such condition the specific unfolded protein it gets successfully associated with certain molecular chaperons like calnexin calnexin and as well as cal reticulin so these are the molecular chaperons which are responsible for inducing the protein folding for suppose for suppose if the unfolded protein if it is not folded properly even though it is in association with certain molecular chaperons like calnexin and calreticulin under such condition the unfolded protein or the misfolded protein it gets successfully retranslocated into the cytoplasm so this is nothing but the cytoplasm right so now the specific unfolded protein or the misfolded protein it gets successfully retranslocated into the cytoplasm right so once when the specific misfolded protein or the unfolded protein when it gets retranslocated into the cytoplasm under such condition the misfolded protein it undergoes protein degradation by taking the advantage of a specialized post translational modification and it is nothing but what ubiquitination as we all know all the proteins they remain in active conformation only when the specific protein when it undergoes folding here but once when the specific protein when it is not folded properly even though it is in association with calnexin and calreticulin under such condition the misfolded protein or the unfolded protein it gets retranslocated from the endoplasmic reticulum lumen into the cytoplasm here so once when the specific misfolded protein when it reaches the cytoplasm under such condition 
the misfolded protein the misfolded protein or the unfolded protein it gets successfully associated with a specialized moiety known as what ubiquitin moiety ubiquitin moiety right so what is ubiquitin here ubiquitin is a 76 amino acid residue moiety right it is a 76 amino acid residue protein moiety so here the specific ubiquitin moiety which possess the specific ubiquitin moiety which possess the glycine amino acid the glycine amino acid which is present at the c terminus right the specific ubiquitin moiety it possess or it consists of glycine amino acid which is present at the c terminus now the specific glycine amino acid which is a part of the ubiquitin moiety it gets successfully recruited to the n terminus of the polypeptide chain so here this is nothing but the n terminus of the polypeptide chain right so to the n terminus of the misfolded protein to the n terminus of the misfolded protein or the unfolded protein the specific ubiquitin moiety which possesses or which consists of glycine amino acid which is present at the c terminus it gets successfully recruited here so once when the specific ubiquitin moiety once when the specific ubiquitin moiety when it gets successfully recruited here to the n terminus of the polypeptide chain by taking the advantage of one atp molecule under such condition the misfolded protein it undergoes protein degradation what it is protein degradation right so this is nothing but the degraded protein the degraded protein so here the protein degradation mechanism it is accompanied by taking the advantage of a specialized post translation modification and it is nothing but ubiquitination so this is about ubiquitination right and the next specialized post translation modification it is nothing but isoprenylation so right now we are going to discuss about isoprenylation isoprenylation right so let me erase the things here isoprenylation isoprenylation right so what exactly happens during isoprenylation so during the isoprenylation during the isoprenylation post translation modification successful recruitment of the isoprenyl group takes place right isoprenyl group the specific isoprenyl group which is a part of cholesterol biosynthetic pathway the specific isoprenyl group which is a part of the cholesterol biosynthetic pathway it gets successfully recruited to some of the proteins like proto oncogenes what are those proto oncogenes proto oncogenes and as well as oncogenes one of the specific oncogene known as ras oncogene right ras oncogene ras oncogene so here the specific ras oncogene the specific ras oncogene it remains in active conformation only when it is in association with isoprenyl group right isoprenyl group so here let us we assume it as the proto oncogene or the specific oncogene known as ras so here the specific ras it remains in active conformation only when it is in association with isoprenyl group so let us we assume it as the isoprenyl group right when the specific proto oncogene or the specific oncogene known as ras when it is in association with the isoprenyl group only under such condition the specific ras oncogene it remains in active conformation so once when the specific isoprenyl group when it gets successfully discarded from the ras oncogene under such condition the specific ras it remains in inactive conformation so the reason why most of the oncologists most of the oncologists who design certain therapeutics in order to inhibit the activity of ras oncogene these specific therapeutics they are capable to inhibit the activity of the ras oncogene are they are capable to inhibit the neoplastic activity of the ras oncogene by discarding the isoprenyl group right so once when the specific isoprenyl group when it was got successfully discarded from the ras oncogene under such condition the specific ras oncogene it remains in inactive conformation and it and it is unable to induce the neoplastic activity so this is nothing but what isoprenylation 
and the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but farnesylation what it is farnesylation farnesylation right so let me write it here farnesylation right farnesylation So here what exactly happens during farnesylation? So during farnesylation, successful recruitment of the farnesyl group takes place. Farnesyl group, which is a part of the cholesterol biosynthetic pathway. Farnesyl group, which is a part of cholesterol biosynthetic pathway, it gets successfully recruited to the newly synthesized polypeptide chain or the nascent polypeptide chain at the end terminus at the end terminus right so once when the specific farnesyl group when it gets successfully recruited to the end terminus of the newly synthesized polypeptide chain or the nascent polypeptide chain it is nothing but what farnesylation right so this is about farnesylation and the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but palmitylation what it is palmitylation palmitylation so what exactly happens during palmitylation so here during palmitylation successful recruitment successful recruitment of palmitic acid takes place successful recruitment of palmitic acid which is in 16 carbon compound which is in 16 carbon compound it gets successfully recruited to the 16 amino acid which is present at the end terminus most commonly right so let us we assume it as the newly synthesized polypeptide chain Newly synthesized polypeptide chain which possess or which contains both the C terminus and as well as the N terminus. So let us we assume at the N terminus there is an available different specialized amino acid known as cysteine. Cysteine, right? So to the cysteine amino acid which is present at the N terminus of the polypeptide chain, the palmitic acid group or the palmitic acid which is a 16 carbon compound it gets successfully recruited here so once when the specific palmitic acid once when the specific palmitic acid which is a 16 carbon compound when it gets successfully recruited to the 16 amino acid which is present at the end terminus of the nascent polypeptide chain it lead to the activation of a specialized post translational modification which is nothing but palmitylation so this is about palmitylation and the next specialized post translational modification is nothing but carboxylation right carboxylation carboxylation it is a specialized post translational modification which is most commonly observed in case of blood clotting proteins right in order to induce the blood coagulation the specific mechanism or the specific process it takes the advantage of carboxylation so let me write it here carboxylation right the specific carboxylation it is most commonly accompanied by taking the advantage of an enzyme known as what carboxyl transferase carboxyl transferase carboxyl transferase is the enzyme which is most commonly responsible or which is most commonly it is required for the successful recruitment of the carboxyl group to the nascent polypeptide chain at the end terminus. So let us we assume it as the nascent polypeptide chain, right? So here to the nascent polypeptide chain which possess or which consists of lysine amino acid. So this is nothing but the lysine amino acid, right? So let us we assume it as the lysine amino acid which is present at the end terminus, which is present at the end terminus. So to the lysine amino acid which is present at the end terminus, the specific carboxyl group, the specific carboxyl group, it gets successfully recruited here by taking the advantage of an enzyme known as carboxyl transferase. So most commonly carboxylation it is responsible in order to organize the various activities like bone metabolism, bone metabolism, vascular calcification vascular calcification calcification 
in order to organize bone metabolism and as well as vascular calcification the specific mechanism or the specific process it takes the advantage of a specialized post translational modification and it is nothing but what carboxylation right so this is about carboxylation so here the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but what meristylation so what exactly happens during meristylation so here during the meristylation successful recruitment of the meristyle group takes place so most commonly the specific meristyle group it gets successfully recruited to the nascent polypeptide chain which is containing the glycine amino acid at its antennas right so let us we assume let us we assume it has the nascent polypeptide chain nascent polypeptide chain or the newly synthesized polypeptide chain which possess n terminus and as well as the c terminus right n terminus and as well as the c terminus so here the specific meristyle group it gets successfully recruited to the glycine amino acid glycine amino acid which is present at the n terminus so for the successful recruitment of the meristyle group to the specific glycine amino acid which is present at the n terminus of the nascent polypeptide chain the specific mechanism it takes the advantage of an enzyme known as meristyle transferase what it is meristyle transferase meristyle transferase so most commonly the specific meristylation it is carried out in order to organize in order to organize to translocate the proteins to the endomembrane system right for the successful translocation of the newly synthesized polypeptide chain or the protein to the endomembrane system to the endomembrane system and even to the plasma membrane even to the plasma membrane the specific mechanism or the specific process it takes the advantage of a specialized post translational modification which is nothing but what meristylation so this is about meristylation and the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but adp ribosylation so what exactly happens during adp ribosylation adp ribosylation right so let me write it here so during adp ribosylation the successful recruitment of the adp ribosyl group takes place so let me write it here adp adp ribosylation right adp ribosylation so here during adp ribosylation successful recruitment of the adp ribosyl group adp ribosyl group to the nascent polypeptide chain or the newly synthesized polypeptide chain it takes place nascent polypeptide chain nascent polypeptide chain the specific adp ribosyl group it gets successfully recruited here so for the successful recruitment of the adp ribosyl group to the nascent polypeptide chain at the end terminus the specific mechanism it takes the advantage of an enzyme known as adp ribosyl transferase adp ribosyl transferase so here the specific adp ribosylation most commonly it is responsible in order to organize in order to organize the various aspects the specific adp ribosylation most commonly it is responsible in order to organize the various with the various activities like cellular stress cellular stress apoptosis apoptosis and as well as cellular differentiation cellular differentiation so in order to organize in order to organize the various aspects or the various activities like cellular stress apoptosis and cellular differentiation the specific mechanism it takes the advantage of a specialized post translational modification and it is nothing but what adp ribosylation right so this is about adp ribosylation and the next specialized post translational modification the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but what biotinylation so here i need to mention you one thing here the specific adp ribosyl group it gets successfully recruited to the nascent polypeptide chain at the end terminus which possesses the glutamic acid right glutamic acid glutamic acid 
so to the specific glutamic acid which is present at the antennas of the nascent polypeptide chain or the newly synthesized polypeptide chain the specific adp ribosyl group it gets successfully recruited by taking the advantage of an enzyme known as adp ribosyl transferase so this is about adp ribosylation and the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but biotinylation what it is biotinylation so what exactly happens during biotinylation so here during the biotinylation during biotinylation successful recruitment of biotin group takes place right successful recruitment of the biotin group takes place biotin group it gets successfully recruited to the nascent polypeptide chain which possess different functional groups like amine group amine group sulfhydryl group sulfhydryl group sulfhydryl group and carboxyl group carboxyl group and most commonly the specific biotinylation or the specific biotin group even it gets successfully recruited to carbohydrates right carbohydrates carbohydrates so in order to organize in order to organize the specific biotinylation the specific mechanism it takes the advantage of an biotin transferase so by taking the advantage of biotin transferase the specific biotin group it gets successfully recruited to the nascent polypeptide chain at the end terminus so here here in order to investigate in order to investigate or in order to recognize that whether the specific biotin group it was got successfully recruited to the nascent polypeptide chain or the protein or not the specific mechanism the specific mechanism or the specific process it takes the advantage of an antibiotic and it is nothing but what streptavidin what it is streptavidin streptavidin so by taking the advantage of an antibiotic known as streptavidin most commonly the various researchers they are capable to recognize or they are capable to identify whether the biotin group whether the specific biotin group it was got successfully recruited to the specific nascent polypeptide chain or not so this is about biotinylation and the next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but s nitrosylation what it is s nitrosylation s nitrosylation right so what exactly happens during s nitrosylation so here during the s nitrosylation successful recruitment of the nitrosyl group takes place right successful recruitment of the nitrosyl group it takes place at the antennas of the polypeptide chain at the antennas of the polypeptide chain so let us we assume it has the polypeptide chain right the nascent polypeptide chain nascent polypeptide chain or the protein which is in the cell during the translation mechanism so here let us we assume let us we assume there is an availability of a specific amino acid known as cysteine what it is cysteine to the cysteine amino acid which is present at the end terminus the specific nitrosyl group the specific nitrosyl group it gets successfully recruited by taking the advantage of an enzyme known as nitrosyl transferase so by taking the advantage of nitrosyl transferase the specific nitrosyl group it gets successfully recruited to the thiol group of cysteine amino acid which is present at the end terminus so what is the role of s nitrosyl nitrosylation here most commonly the specific s nitrosylation it is responsible in order to organize the membrane trafficking right membrane trafficking so let me write it here membrane trafficking in order to organize membrane trafficking and as well as apoptosis apoptosis and cellular differentiation cellular differentiation the specific mechanism it takes the advantage of s nitrosylation so this is about s nitrosylation and the next next specialized post translational modification it is nothing but what hydroxylation what it is hydroxylation so let me write it here 
hydroxylation right hydroxylation so here during the hydroxylation mechanism or here during the hydroxylation post translational modification successful recruitment of the hydroxyl group takes place right successful recruitment of the hydroxyl group takes place to the nascent polypeptide chain at the end terminus right end terminus to the nascent polypeptide chain which possess the end terminus the specific hydroxyl group it gets successfully recruited here so here here most commonly the specific hydroxylation most commonly the specific hydroxylation mechanism or the specific hydroxylation post translational modification it is most commonly accompanied in order to organize various cellular signaling networks right various cellular signaling networks and even it is also responsible to organize the phosphorylation phosphorylation and as well as ubiquitination phosphorylation and as well as ubiquitination in case of eukaryotic cells ubiquitination in case of eukaryotic cells so here this is about the hydroxylation post translational modification so all these are the various post translational modifications which are observed both in case of the prokaryotic cells and as well as in case of the eukaryotic cell for suppose if an specific protein if an specific serum protein if it had not undergone post translational modification under such, under such condition it lead to the activation of various inherited disorders in case of the next generation people are in case of the offsprings so this is about post translational modification which is organized in case of the prokaryotic cells and as well as in case of the eukaryotic cells in detail i hope that this video will help you a lot so if you like this video just hit the like button and share it to your friends and i remember you people to subscribe my channel for getting more and more videos what i make day to day thank you